Okay, thank you very much, Karen. Uh, thank you all for being here. I first of all want to extend a big thank you to the Academy, the Academy of Canadian Citizen <clears throat> Cinema and Television for putting on this event and a host of other events uh, during the year, including the Outstanding Canadian Screen Awards. I hope uh, if you didn't get a chance to attend that you caught it on television. It was fabulous. Uh, we have Karen Bruce uh, at the back who's looking kind of with a smile on her face and looking very calm, uh, not giving any indication of how much actual effort it takes to put on an event like this. Uh, I also want to thank uh, the listener here, uh, Tina, Lindsay and Glenn for making your time available. Uh, also uh, Doug Till from the OMDC. So these events are very important, we think, to the industry to help the industry grow, figure out a little bit about how the system works. Not everybody comes in contact with, uh, with OMDC and the City of Toronto. And we have three veterans of the industry here who have uh, quite graciously made the time available to talk a little bit about their interactions in the city. Uh, and we'll have lots of time for questions throughout it. If a question comes up, just please raise your hand. We'll kind of jump right to it. Uh, but maybe before I turn it over to the, uh, the listener crew, I'm going to toss a question to you, Doug, because I uh, I know we're very industry friendly here, but I note on the promo you had the uh, three pictures of the uh, industry listener and the uh, public sector didn't get their photo on there. So I have to start with Doug. <coughs> uh, Doug, maybe you can just talk a little bit about what um, OMDC's, Ontario Media Development Corporation's role is in the industry. Okay, I'm a marketing consultant with the OMDC. and We tend to be the first place that a producer, domestic or international, will come when they're considering Ontario as a location. Uh, we have lots of resources that we use uh, to assist them. We have a fabulous digital locations database, over a quarter million images, 12,000 distinct locations. So we have the producers send us a location list or the script, and then we put together an image package. We hire a Directors Guild scout who's familiar with our system. They break down the script, and then they provide to the producer, somewhere usually between, depending on the requirement, two to ten options for every scripted location. So then we can demonstrate to a producer that what they need is here in Ontario. We uh, have facilitation uh, services, troubleshooting services. If a producer lands here in Ontario, then we do everything we can to facilitate their production where it's appropriate. Now sometimes when you're in the provincial government it's not appropriate. So for instance if you have an issue with uh, the Toronto District School Board, you would go to Randy's office or Eric's office uh, prior to coming to us and we would insist that you do that. There is an appropriate time for the government to get involved. We do everything that we can to help facilitate uh, locations. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work out as well as we'd hope it would. Um, so the Film Commission group is made up of Donna Zuklinski, who is away on leave at the moment, Marsha Hurley over here on our left, is stabbing, subbing in for Janice Reed Johnston, who is subbing in for Donna. And so we have two full-time consultants, and we have about five, please excuse my sweating, I hate being up here, so I'm <laughs> wiping <laughs> regularly. <laughs> so we have two full-time film consultants. We're industry specialists. Our job is to be reactive. Uh, we wait for the producers and the production companies to get in touch with us. We divide up all of the major US studios Canadian networks, production companies, American networks, and then any calls that come in, any requests for service are divided up between Marcia and myself. We have three or four stitchers. We have a massive queue, um, which is a good thing to have. We have lots of locations that we're stitching together to put into the database to increase its size. We've seen a great deal of growth in northern Ontario um, and in Ottawa, so that's a couple of the areas where we're really expanding the database. So that's mostly who's in uh, the Film Commission group. Um, what else have I got here? Uh, the OMDC also represents the other cultural industries in the, in the province, so book and magazine publishing, interactive digital media, and music. So a lot of the tax credit programs that are available to film and television are also available in the, these other areas. Most of the folks that work at OMDC do administer tax credits. Um, for all the different cultural media industries. We have a basic um, breakdown on tax credit information. I can provide that to you. If you ever want to get into in-depth 
tax credit uh, information, I would forward you to one of the professional business officers. That way you're not making any critical business decisions on the information that I have. Uh, so I told you about the database. We also have the Los Angeles office. This is an office that is primarily run um, by a woman named Kelly Graham Shearer. Uh, the province is the primary funder, but the City of Toronto and uh, the industrial group Film Ontario also support the office. So Kelly's job down there is to stay in touch with all of the production companies and the, uh, the studios and networks, make sure that they're always continuously aware of what we have here. We don't market in the same way that a traditional marketer might, but it is important for us to always get the new information out there. If there's a new studio, if there's a new lab. So anything that's um, new and uh, would be of interest to our clients, we get that information to them as quickly as possible uh, in LA through Kelly. She also runs um, certain events down there, trade events, uh, as well as she has an event called, uh, is it Ontario A? Ontario night. There's an A in there somewhere. <laughs> so they get 70 or 80 expats that uh, work in the Los Angeles area that are from Ontario. They all get together and network that way. Uh, the tax credits. Um, if you go to any film convention anywhere, you realize very quickly that if you don't have tax credits, you're not in the game. Ontario has very competitive tax credits. Um, I, I've got to tell you, marketing Ontario is like selling a Rolls Royce. We have fabulous infrastructure here. We have great studios, a great talent base, great crews. So yes, we're one of the top four um, production bases in North America, but um, everything a producer needs is here, including the good and reliable support of Ontario's tax credits. That's great. I think Doug, that's, that's stop kind of me. If you don't yeah, stop we'll me there, some, I'll just keep going. Questions. Um, I'm just going to take 30 seconds to introduce Eric Jensen. Eric, if you'd stand up. Uh, Eric is the... Uh, Eric's the manager of uh, the Toronto Film and Television office and is the person that you want to talk to, makes everything happen, runs a great crew. Uh, I have a, uh, a fabulous job as the acting film commissioner, working both with a fabulous industry uh, and working with a team that, uh, i got to tell you, I've worked in many different positions within the city. This is a crew that really delivers on its commitment to excellence. You've got a problem, they're your advocate, they will be there to help you, to give you advice of how to make it happen. Uh, I will tell you, just wave a flag. This is one of these things. Don't try this at home. You know, they coordinate with the police, with fire, with parks, with transportation, with everybody. Uh, you are much better off letting them do it than engaging yourself. And for a very simple reason, City Hall is a very big place. I will tell you, Eric and his team know much more about what's going on in any individual division than many of the people in those divisions. So. Uh, you want to avoid a conflict, you want to avoid an oops, I didn't realize this was going on. It's Eric and the film office team that you really uh, want to talk to, used to. They'll give you the best advice they possibly can. They are here to help you succeed. Uh, so maybe I, I'm going to ask um, a few questions. Tina, I know you were, we were talking before, you said you were just back from Calgary from yeah. doing Heartland. So welcome back to Toronto. Thank Glad you. to have you here. Um, maybe it's a kind of, we think Toronto is a great place, Ontario is a great place to, uh, to shoot film, television products. Uh, maybe you can compare and contrast and tell us a little bit about. Um, well, I, I worked uh, a lot here in, in, in Toronto and um, I did go to Calgary for, for six years and produced Heartland there and it was completely different because we were in a rural setting so we didn't have a, a lot of the issues or problems or you know, challenges that one might in, in a city with, with um, parking and uh, police and just everything that you need when you're shooting in a downtown core. But the, what was really interesting for me uh, being away for six years and coming back was um, just A, how strong our industry is and how, 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 how we have so many talented people here. But from, from a location point of view, uh, how much the city has grown. I mean, it's, it's grown sideways, but it's grown up too. You know, the amount of uh, condominiums um, and, and new buildings that, that, have been, that have gone up in six years, it was just staggering to me that um, this has happened. And um, the traffic itself had, had grown leaps and bounds, you know. And, um, and that's always fascinating because we, we um, in the film industry, whenever we're shooting on location, 
We're, we're like the circus coming to town. You know, we kind of show up, park our stuff, throw up our tent, shoot, and then, and then pull out. And, and there's a real challenge with, with um, shooting in the downtown core, um, kind of, you know, how all this is going to work out. And um, I think um, one of the interesting things, and, and Glenn can speak more to this, is um, before we used to be able to park on the streets. There was, um, you know, uh, parking, parking lots that we could pull into and park the unit. And, um, but now all the parking lots are, are becoming condos. So, so it's like, where do you park this very large unit? And uh, Glenn, you should speak more on that. <laughs> yeah, we uh, park on the street. I mean, there's nowhere else to park. There are all the, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, but the challenges we have uh, of parking on the street uh, these days uh, is the construction everywhere. Uh, you know, it's uh, all the, the main streets where we normally park is being taken up by construction, so we have to figure something else out. And, you know, we either have to park further away from our location and shuttle equipment in or have smaller vehicles where we have the motherships, we call it, somewhere else. We have all our gear in the Hinos or, you know, five-ton trucks, and we bring them closer and offload and sometimes um, take the trucks away. That's uh, a, a one option, but uh, certainly without parking lots, uh, it is a little more difficult. But uh, Eric and the film office has uh, have been great with giving us permits on streets that you don't normally uh, are able to park on because of uh, rush hour routes or they're heavily congested with uh, just traffic in general. And what with a lot of condos, there are a lot more people in town and a lot more mm -hmm. traffic, so it's a, a, a little bit of a pain. But uh, we're able to work around it and. With the help of the film office and, and everyone involved, we, we make it work. So. Yeah, this raises actually a couple really good points about Toronto because the points are right. There, are, there is more construction, condos in parking lots are disappearing, condos are appearing uh, everywhere. We'll be putting bike lanes in very soon. So the available space to park vehicles is, is shrinking, mm -hmm. actually. But, you know, Toronto's reputation globally is as a city where the industry collaborates. You know, everybody works together. Nobody's picking up rocks and throwing at each other and blaming each other for it. And so both uh, Eric and his team inside the city are looking to ensure that there are spaces available. There will be fewer of them. That's kind of a, a given. But to ensure in key locations there are spaces available. At the same time, you know, as Glenn said, the industry is looking to downsize its footprint, right? So smaller vehicles parked here, the mothership gets parked someplace else if you don't have to access it as often. But it's a very collaborative approach, that, and that's what drives uh, the success of this industry and will continue to drive it. Maybe Lindsay, I'll toss you. You're the production designer. Toronto, what's, why well, Toronto? The thing about Toronto that's amazing is that it's kind of like this city that I've actually made into a million other cities. So it's an East Coast city. It's very dense, very urban. And, uh, you know, I've, we've shot it for New York, Boston, Chicago. I've even shot a Mississippi Delta movie around here, um, Washington, D.C. Um, I mean, so many different places um, you can transform Toronto into, and it's fantastic for that. And it, it's just a very kind of, it, it's kind of almost a bland palette that you can mold to your own, you know, story, which is great. It's not, it doesn't have huge mountains, which sadly, but it, you know, it, it's, it's We're working kind of, on that. <laughs> it's a city, and it's, it, it can become a city anywhere in North America virtually. And it, it's not LA, and it, we don't have palm trees, sadly. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it's great for that. And, um, and in doing so, you know, we often have to create a period and make it, you know, 1920, 1930. And the city is very accommodating for that. I know they've allowed us to close down streets and take down street signs and do all that manipulation that makes it. The, the scene you need it to be for the era you need it to be. And so, you know, it's, it's one of those cities that works for many, many other places and other situations and eras. And for that, it's been a great place to shoot, I think. Okay. And, and I just, if I could just add to that, I mentioned the image packages. 
um, in our database, we carry probably 10 or 15 what we call generic image packages. So your New York image package, your Chicago, your Washington. And again, this is what producers want to see. So if we get a call saying, I want to place this in Chicago, there you go, here's your package. And we can be all those things. And when Lindsay talks about mountains and palm trees, we have some of the best post-production special effects <laughs> anywhere. We, we can be anywhere. And anything you want, we can yeah. add in one way or, or the other. Uh, now, so I'm, I'm really, I think Toronto is a great place to shoot. Ontario is a great place to shoot. But I also think, you know, we learn more from uh, uh, things that go wrong than kind of things that go right all the time. So I, you know, as a Toronto Film Commissioner, I probably shouldn't do this, but uh, Glenn, I'm, you know, I'm just going to toss it over to you. Is there anything that didn't work out or could have worked out better? How could we better serve the industry? Hmm. Um, more parking. <laughs> <laughs> Less construction. Less construction. Or speed up the construction. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, that's, uh, you know, a, a big issue, of course, is the construction and, and parking and where to park. But there are still slivers of streets <laughs> we can park on, which is great. Um, but I think uh, what I would like to see, personally, what I think would benefit all is uh, a, a lot of more advertising in the city um, to say, you know, here we are, uh, film crews, we're filming, there's, uh, we have an industry here that is, is vibrant and, uh, and works and, and everyone knows it, there's a lot of filming done in Toronto. But I don't really see a lot of advertising so much of, you know, uh, I mean, I know the Ontario, the OMGC did a big campaign and there was television commercials, which was great. And that was, but it would be great to see more of that, I think. You know, we actually like, discussed calling it uh, economic development. Mm -hmm. So when you went down the road, you wouldn't say f see a sign that said film crew. You would say economic development. Mm -hmm. The idea being that people would understand that there are jobs. Yeah. Absolutely. Involved here, twenty to twenty-five thousand directly related to the industry in and around the GTA. Yeah, so. I'm glad to hear that because that actually conversation came up at the Toronto Film Board just a week or two ago to do exactly that. And you know, I mean, we are um, we, we just passed our 2013 was the third consecutive year that we've done over a billion dollars in business uh, with film and television commercials that had some component of uh, of on location filming so people working in a studio were working in a studio and that's not even included in the total but if you were shooting on a city street or a park third consecutive year over a billion I can remember uh, not so long ago when the dollar was at 65 cents uh, everybody said if it ever gets to 85 the industry is dead in the water and pack up your bags and go home uh, we've been at par and now slightly below par for the last three years and we're doing our best years ever and that I'll tell you is a credit to everybody in this race a credit to the talent in Toronto. The game is still about making money and the talent in Toronto helps people do things on take one and not take 27 and a half going down the street. So there's just an incredible amount of talent in the city. So thank all of you for contributing that and making the industry so strong. And we do, just to say we've done our best years ever, we're not resting on our laurels. You know, we've notionally said, hey, you know what, we should just double this. But in order to double it, we have to do exactly what Glenn said. We need to have the public and the community on side so it's not the oh, damn trucks blocking the lane again, but it's wow, isn't it cool kind of listener filming in Toronto. So we're going to be looking at how we make that real. Yeah, Tina. and and I find that um, you know, when when we're shooting on a street and and there's people going by, they'll they'll always ask what show are you on? And, and you'll, you'll say the listener, and they're like, oh yeah, I watched that show. I didn't realize it was shot in Toronto. <coughs> and um, so, so that's really cool for, for the people of the city to, to know all the different shows that are shot here. I think, I think they'd be really blown away to, to know all the different shows that do you know, happen here. And I just wanted to add that we, we have tremendous uh, crews, but the one thing that uh, Toronto has, um, that a lot of other um, cities may not, is that um, we, we have an incredible um, group of talented actors and extras, and, and they range um, every ethnicity, which is, which is so great, because it can be, as Lindsay said, any city, you know? And, um, and, and that talent pool is huge. And um, we, we've been doing the show for five years, and you know, we've all been working in this industry for a long time and it's just amazing to see um, the acting talent um, in, in this city too and in this province. It's, it's mind-blowing. 
Okay, and I think that that's a, the the diversity is the city's motto: diversity our strength. It takes you know it's not just about kind of uh, ethnicity and in language, but it is about everything, and it really is a strength. It what makes everything. It's what drives part of the creativity in the city because you get different points of view, different perspectives, uh, and can be kind of anything and anywhere to this. Uh, Lindsay, you're, you've, you've been around as well in different cities. Uh, your comments about kind of uh, what Toronto might do better or could work. Well, I, I have, I have uh, shot in a lot of different cities, but um, in particularly in Canada, the great thing about Toronto is its urban feeling and its high buildings and its density and its downtown core and, you know, I mean, you have then you have huge mansions and you have rolling hills and you have almost other than big mountains as i mentioned <laughs> you have almost <laughs> e anything you need but <clears throat> the particular thing i think about toronto is its incredible urban downtown which makes it great if you're trying to double for new york or some big north american city i mean i've even made uh, toronto look like france and paris and you know, Europe, and so there's something, if you just know where to look, there's something for almost everywhere. And I think it's the diversity of the architecture, it's the density, it's the, it's just the variety that you have in the city that allows you to create all these different environments, which I appreciate. Okay, great. And we're happy to have any questions from the audience. Anybody's got a question, just uh, raise your hand. Yes, sir. Yeah, I've got a, an associate who uh, works in Wilmington, North Carolina, Well, you know, I'll answer <coughs> that. Um, and, Thank and you. That, <laughs> because, because people ask the same question of me quite a lot. And I'm not, you know, a big producer or in production. I'm a designer. But even from, from my um, area, if, you, if, if um, filming slowed down even a little bit in Toronto, the trickle-down effect is enormous because when crews and, P and cast and, and different um, sort of um, support systems come from out of town, you know, people need to go to restaurants, they need to see the movies, they need to have their hair done, they need to have their nails done. You know, there are all these different things that benefit from having a movie here, which is something that you don't really think about and you don't really see. So if somebody in North Carolina says to you, you know, well, what's the big deal? It's, it, ask the people who own restaurants there and who are trying to sell clothes there and have a little boutique. And, you know, they really benefit from all this influx of foreign, you know, people coming in and living in their town, you know. So that's kind of, to my mind, the most important thing of providing a tax credit. It's all the trickle-down effect to everybody. Uh, what I will say on that subject is that they're using a multiplier there, and the Ontario government does not do that. If you bring one dollar into a jurisdiction, that's still just one dollar. It doesn't turn into nine dollars and twelve cents. But there are certain people that, uh, and in a lot of the commissions in the U.S., I mean, they have to generate their own funding. They're not supported by the state. Um, they have a slightly different mandate, but we do not use the multiplier. Um, and we're pretty careful. Uh, with the provinces, with the people's money. For instance, when we improved the Ontario Production Service tax credit, I believe it was at 20 or 25 percent on labor, and then we made it 25 percent on all qualifying expenditures. Everybody loves the saying, all spend, it's not an all spend, because there are exclusions, and one of the exclusions is hotel accommodations. Now that's not good for crew that's going out of town to work. But the optics on paying a tax credit on Bruce Willis's $4,000 a night hotel room are not good. And the, the people in Ontario, I don't think, want to pay for that. Also, the last point I'll make is that we have lost shows to other jurisdictions 
that pay above the line tax credits. So you're getting tax credit, your dollars, paid to the movie stars. We only pay tax credits, labor or to commercial entities, to persons or businesses paying taxes in Ontario. So we, we think we do a pretty good job of, of balancing it, of keeping the tax credits competitive, but not going into areas that we don't believe, or I think, I shouldn't speak for the whole government or the Ministry of Finance, I don't think we go into areas that are not <coughs> defendable. Yes, go ahead. Well said, well said. One that's of an reasons. excellent point. I'm not sure if everybody heard that. There kind of were two points. One is that Toronto, relative to many other jurisdictions in the world, is a relatively safe city. So if you've got kind of cast and crew and other people here, it's a safe and it's a comfortable city. People like to come to Toronto. It's not just safe kind of as a baseline. It's, not, it's a safe city and people love to come mm -hmm. to Toronto for, for a whole lot of reasons. Uh, and the second point is also important in terms of tax credit or anything else. Is, and this is the point I think you know, Doug was being quite modest in the, in the contribution the Ontario government makes to this because the, you know, the line about the Ontario tax credits is you know, they are not the best on the planet. Uh, but they're very good and they're stable. You can rely on them, right? Where some jurisdictions, you yeah. know, you thought you had a deal and it turns out, you know, you didn't when you get to the end. And a producer may be waiting one or two <coughs> years to collect his tax credit from the jurisdiction. <coughs> so you want to make sure that somebody doesn't get voted in. I was at a conference in Michigan when, you know, their, their governor was toppled. And the man didn't stay for the rest of the conference. The governor, uh, the, the, sorry, the film commissioner from Michigan, he left the next day because he knew that his tax credits were gone and that so was his job. But here, they're dependable. There's no end date on them. They can be repealed. But um, if you come to Ontario, we have a long history since we invented the tax credit. We were the first jurisdiction uh, to bring it to the film and television market. Um, you can pretty much rely on us as much as anybody that your money's going to be there. And I would make a final comment because in, while the Ontario government may not use a formal multiplier, you know, they understand this. So even when the rest of, you know, we've been in kind of contracting economies and reducing expenditures, the tax credit has pretty much stayed the same as it's always been uh, because there is an understanding that it, it's not about Bruce Willis's paycheck, but it's about the folks who operate the craft trucks, right? I mean, there's, a, there's well over 25,000 people in this industry who aren't the wealthiest folks kind of in the city uh, or, or, or in Canada. And it's also very integrated. So this is a film and television industry, but there are links, you know, with to live theater, to other things. Whether you know you're doing a, a set designer or lighting, or there's a whole bunch of links that it's. It is an ecosystem here, and I think as Lindsay said, or you start pulling one piece out, mm -hmm. and some of that talent says, well, you know, I not I can't make a full time living here, so I'm going to wherever. Uh, and you know, Toronto's claim to fame is you want to come here because we have the talent to deliver. That talent starts to leave away. It's, it's much easier to keep here than it is to, to try to bring back. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Tina, you were going to comment? No, I was nodding, uh, agreeing. Now, <laughs> <laughs> that's never happened before. <laughs> Write that down, Eric. <laughs> now, we help out a lot of shows if they get in trouble. And we never got any calls from these guys. They never got in trouble. <laughs> They never required our intervention. They never painted themselves into holes or into corners and said, get me out of here. Uh, as I was talking with Tina, they, uh, they had one incident where they thought they might need to move their studio. So I have a studio and warehouse list. So she said, would I please send that to her? And in five years, tracking through my emails, that was about it. <laughs> so uh, a real professional bunch. They know what they're doing. Shaftesbury, again, there are some folks that will come to us for a scouting assistance. And our mandate is industrial development. So we're supposed to take new people that haven't decided to settle here and bring those jobs here. That's my mandate. But we do assist uh, always our Canadian producers. 
And some of them ask for a little more than others. And these guys don't ask for anything because <laughs> they can do it all themselves. Yeah, excellent point. I, I want to thank the listener to that because the listener is what we would call kind of a low maintenance kind of production. They just do everything so well. And this is, you know, because there's a question come out of this about how do you manage that? And, and in an industry where we want to grow it, even just maintaining it, uh, when you go into, uh, on location, you grow into a neighborhood, you know, it's, it's actually important that you be respectful. So, you know, it's, you know, I'll say it's, it's simple as like, you know, pick up the cigarette butts and the coffee cups, you know, don't be yelling down the street at three o'clock in the morning. It's that because you might get away with it for your production. But I'll tell you, you know, you make life harder for Eric and his team and the crew that comes next, because they don't want any part of the film industry on their street or anywhere nearby, so just thanks. And then we get involved in political situations and the whole thing escalates out of control. So I don't know who the best to ask the question to, but, but you guys do a fabulous job in you know, just building that engagement with the community, and I don't know how you do it. I'll start and then, and then you jump in. But you know, I mean, this, this whole industry, um, everybody's a pro, and, and everybody's very respectful of the locations that we go to. Because what you don't ever want to do in this business is to burn a location. Because once you do, it's so difficult to ever go back into it. And um, you, you have to make sure that, you know, um, whenever a, a show goes into any, any place, you are basically speaking for the entire industry. And um, it's, it's really important that everybody uh, conduct themselves in a professional manner. And, um, you know, I'm very fortunate that I work with an incredible team of filmmakers that do. You know, and, and we really try to kind of um, in advance um, uh, look at the script, have a conversation about what the locations could be, and um, Glenn and his team will go out and they'll, they'll scout the city and, and come back with options, show it to Lindsay and um, our showrunner, Peter Mohan, and myself to kind of see what works for story, and, and, then, and then we We'll, we'll go and scout those locations in person with the director. And one of our directors is here, by the way, Bradley Walsh. Say hi, Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> and Adam Haight is here from Shaftesbury as well. So Thank you. But um, yeah, I, I, I think it's really, really important for, for all of us because every year we uh, continue to fight for our industry. We always have to do better than we did last year. And, and just make sure that you know we as an industry are supporting each other you know and and very often you know the producers will talk to each other about this location or this place or this situation um, and so will the location managers um, they're all very tight together um, and help each other with with kind of what worked at this particular location what to watch out for you know the neighbor across the street is a is a pain, so you got to go and, and make a special knock on the door, or you know whatever it is, because we're we're really um, part of a larger industry um, that has to support each other. And it's funny the OMDC too, with what they have on their database when we're looking for locations. I mean, yes, we do go out and scout locations and do cold calls and hi, I'm with a film crew, can I film in your house? And uh, we do go through the database where we find a lot of locations, and they list sometimes sensitive neighborhoods or uh, stay away. No, it's mainly sensitive neighborhoods or what to look out for. Um, but especially when we work on episodic TV, we want to go back to these areas. So I'm with the Directors Guild of Canada and we are a union and we have a standards committee and because we are on a series, not to say it's just series, but uh, feature films, movie of the weeks, even commercials. Uh, I've worked on all those uh, uh, areas, and we uh, want to come back to these areas. And so, you know, behooves me to do that because I want to keep working. Um, so we treat the neighborhood with respect. I treat it like if it was my home, what would I want to see? And uh, we have people, we letter the neighborhood, we let everyone know what we're going to be doing, and we don't do anything unless we have permission to you know, put a light on that lawn or do this, that, and the other. Um, but. Um, Certainly, uh, we uh, we want that respect from the community, and uh, and we give back. I mean, if we're you know we ask permission to put a light, or you know want the actor to come out of that door instead of that door, we help people, give them a couple of bucks, and we get insurance in place and what have you. And uh, 
you know, help everyone. If there's a problem, we always do troubleshooting, and we're, we're there to uh, smooth the waters, per se, to, so that everyone has a great time filming. The community loves us. They watch our show. And they want you to come back. And they want you to come back. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That, it, it is working, clearly. Clearly, it's working. Uh, and, that, you know, the city of Toronto, we also have on our database kind of information that when we issue a permit that will say, you know, house number such and such, you know, just be a little extra careful. Because in any community, uh, no matter how hard you work, there's always going to be somebody who just, you know, really doesn't like the industry or doesn't like, nor just has maybe too much time on their hands and, uh, you know, looking to cause trouble about something. And you just don't want to go kind of poke that balloon. Just, you know, just... You know, it, it's a heads up to let's just be good about you know how we how we deal with it, even if we go a little bit over the top. So uh, I'm going to look for any other questions in the audience as well. But before I do, Lindsay, just you know some advice to uh, the industry as a whole about you know how you go about picking locations or choosing. How do you not so much locations, but the the whole design of the uh, of elements of the show? How did how did you get to be where you are? How do you you know what advice do you have? Well, um, I, I started, I'm an architect, so I started in architecture, and of course I'm always fascinated in arch with architecture, and I think that um, <coughs> it all starts, <coughs> it all starts with a story, and, um, give me some water. I can get you some water. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. Only if you want your next job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. So, it all starts with a story. So. The script is really the essence and the basis of everything. So you read the script and you see what era it's in. Is it in this century or last century or whatever? Thank you, darling. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, so that's sort of the beginning of, of everything. And then, you know, you, you look, is it, an, is it a mansion? Is it an old warehouse? You know, you look at the story and you decide what you need and then you work with your favorite location managers and they go and they look for, you know, a few warehouses, a few big mansions, or whatever is needed to tell oh, the story. You. And then um, I'll look at this um, body of um, different buildings and obviously, you know, I'm, I love the architecture and I'm, I'm always fascinated with that whole aspect of it. And as I said before, Toronto has a great variety. And um, so then you pick the locations along with the producer, the director, the writer, the showrunner, whoever is on the creative production team. And you go and look at them and then sometimes, you know, if you're doing a show that takes place in the 1920s, you look at something and you know, you can't have an exit sign and you can't have all these things. So you have to go in and modify the location and change it and make it look true to the era or if it's futuristic, you modify it. So. So there's a lot of, um, you use the bones of what you can find in the city and then you, you add or you subtract, you know, to tell your story and it's all about the story and that's the beginning and end of, of, of what we do. So um, I think that's kind of um, the fun part of it is, is telling a story visually. You made that sound easy. Did I hear a question? So. You, sorry, could you stand up so everyone can hear the question? <coughs> Thank you. 
that's an excellent point, you know, because and so one thing about the film industry too, and, and not just about the, is that it attracts other creative people, right? So creative people, whether you're a creative scientist, a creative, you know, person in financial service, whatever, you like to hang out with other creative people. So cities that have this kind of dynamic of other creative industry serve as a magnet for many other things kind of outside of the specific industry that really, really uh, benefits the city. Did, did you have a question or were you just wrapping up? Thank you very um, much. Sorry. One, one thing that I wanted to add, which, which I think is really fascinating about our business, is that um, you know, um, it, it sort of um, takes into account all forms of art, whether it's architecture, uh, painting, sculpture, um, furniture design, costumes, you know, wardrobe, um, whether it's um, any, any, anything that goes on the film screen is, is, or TV screen is, is something that is art oriented, you know, and, um, and, and whether it's, you know, the, a particular color, um, it's, it's everything that we do is, is very artistic and art oriented. And, and it really is, is the only um, medium that incorporates all forms of art, you know? Creating a world. Yeah, absolutely. You're creating a whole little universe there. And whether it's jewelry design, you know, it, it encompasses everything, really. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Glenn, I know that you've got a background both in feature films as well as television series. Is there any kind of difference or compare and contrast between the job of a location manager and those two? Features are, uh, depending on what feature, but I, I've worked on small features and large features, and of course, you know, usually features are bigger and there's more locations in a, or, or more to do. Um, and TV series, the, uh, the big difference, I think, is TV series are, are faster and quicker, and I have to find locations uh, every week, basically, because once I find locations for the week that's shooting, then I'm finding locations for the next episode. Once that one's finished and I'm wrapping up, features, once you find, say, 10 locations for a movie, then you're just riding it for, for the rest of the movie, whereas episodic, I'm working for six months out of the year, and I'm, it's a, I don't know what's coming. So the scripts are being uh, written on time or late sometimes, <laughs> and I have to, I don't know what's coming. So I, I have to find locations. Sometimes uh, I, I'll have seven days to find it. Sometimes I'll have a day to find something. And the, the other thing, too, it changes sometimes. If you have, you know, they want to shoot in a hotel, and a couple days before you shoot it, they go, yeah, you know, maybe it should be uh, like a house. And, you know, sometimes that changes. We just got to roll with it, and, and we do that. But feature films, usually they're set in, the types of locations you, they want to find, and then you have a, a good amount of time to find them, and then you just go with it. So, it's, uh, yeah, TV is like a six or seven day pressure cycle, yeah. and feature film is a six to nine month pressure cycle. So um, when I was a location manager, that's exactly the kind of show I'd be on, listener, um, because I preferred a six or seven day pressure cycle, um, and I preferred working on Canadian series. The other thing I wanted to bring, what you were talking about earlier, is the location manager is in a unique position because he has to work for the production, work for the designer and the producer, and if he's on a bad show, he has to protect the city from that show. <laughs> he's in a unique position because Absolutely. remember what they're talking about, burning locations. If you've got a bad show or somebody who's just going to run amok, this is, it's one of the worst things for the industry. And the city of Toronto is better at protecting its locations than, well, it's better than New York. You'll see that there are certain parts of New York that get burnt regularly. And that's because they don't, well, I don't know what exactly they don't do, but I do know what the city of Toronto does do. If you don't mind me speaking for you, Eric. You get your one or your two opportunities to shoot on the city permit. After that, the neighborhood has a buy-in. And this is always going to be a city before it's a studio. So you have to give the neighborhood that buy-in. It's their neighborhood. You're the guest. So when you come back for the third or fourth time, you are getting signatures. You're getting permission. <coughs> and we don't burn any locations in this city. We may have a little pullback once in a while um, on those that are the most stressed and the most desirable locations, but never burn. That's a good point. We've got time for maybe one, maybe two more questions, but I'll just pick up on that because the city, we do keep track of 
uh, of problems and complaints as well because our job is to grow the industry so you know somebody out there that is burning locations it's it's not an isolated problem that we have to go fix with an individual it's an industry problem that it creates for us so we are very sensitive to that yes sir great to do more of that um, in the city, you know, for sure, because I, I don't think we've done that for, I think we, we continue to do it, but it'd be great to do more of it. But we, we, we do, we also do things like we'll go into an, a, an area and we'll clean it up. That's and we'll true paint too. things yeah. and we'll upgrade things and we'll, you know, for our story and of course we'll leave it that way. Yeah. You know, if there's an old sort of terrible looking spot, you know, that needs a complete makeover, but it has great bones, we'll do that and, you know, improve it in that way and leave it and, you know, contribute in that way. Yeah, these types of things, just saying thank you goes a long way. They're actually very important. They're really important things to do, which is why it's a pleasure for me to be with the listener team because they really are a model of excellence out there in the city and we're very happy to have them in Toronto and hope you stay for season 27. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. A lot of money there. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's not just from that, but from everything else. Yeah, that's it. So I'm going to maybe wrap up. We have time for one question. Just one last question, sir. This is more, this is more for you than me. Because listening is interesting because we shot in Toronto for two years, then in Hamilton for a year, and then came back for two more additions. So in contrasting coming back to Toronto, sort of from your point of view, in terms of Yeah, I think, I mean, particularly, uh, I mean, Hamilton is great if you're doing a kind of story where locations in Hamilton are, are great. But for a, the listener, which is sort of, um, you know, a, a kind of a slick city-driven show, Toronto is a much better location. And it was hard to find that slickness and that, and that scale and that urbanism in Hamilton. So it, fabulous coming back to Toronto and it just services the story better yeah so if you're doing a story like that <laughs> hey we, we love Hamilton we love Hamilton it's mm -hmm. it's got great it's locations great to shoot too. but but for the listener which is you know a kind of a real urban high-end it's 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 kind of stylized the listener because you're talking about a guy who can read minds and personally I don't know anyone who can do that but um, <laughs> it's it's you know it's a story that's it's kind of otherworldly in a funny way so we like it to be a little slicker and 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 you know a, a great looking show it's it's part of our mandate which mm -hmm. we can achieve in Toronto a little easier than in Hamilton Okay, well, thank you very much, and the, I'm glad that it's being videoed because the record will show it was not the Toronto Film Commissioner that made the comment about Hamilton. I'm <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> well, pleased to, to, to be here. Uh, but I, uh, I do want to thank all of you for being here today and taking your time. I saw a lot of nodding heads during the discussion, so I think there's a lot of good information being provided. Again, I want to thank Tina and Glenn and Lindsay and Doug for being here and sharing their knowledge. Uh, I'm sure they're going to hang around for a little while uh, after Eric is also here so if you have any more questions be happy to talk to anybody kind of one-on-one -on -one in small groups and again thank you very much to uh, Karen and the ACT team for organizing this event I think these are fabulous and uh, we hope to participate in many more of them so Great. please join me in thanking everyone <laughs>
are there complimentary beer and wine available? So I hope you can join us. And if you have any other questions, please come up and ask the panelists or myself, and I'm happy to answer. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.